Hey, it's Darius. And even if you don't get a SIM on QBI, you still have to know something about it. So let's start with the very basics and we'll keep adding one new thing. So we'll be ready for anything the CPA reg exam might throw us in QBI. So the most likely question would be to calculate someone's QBI deduction for the current year. And it could be a pretty involved calculation or it could be pretty simple depending on the circumstances. We'll start with something basic and it'll get a little more sophisticated as we go. So here's the facts. Julia is a married taxpayer who operates a candy store as a sole proprietor. The business has one employee who was paid $80,000 during the current year. That might be important. The wage is paid $80,000. The business has no significant fixed assets. Net income on Julia's Schedule C for the current year Two hundred and thirty-five thousand. That also could be very important. And her taxable income, always important for the QBI deduction, two hundred and seventy-eight thousand. Assume the threshold for a married filing jointly taxpayer is between three hundred and twenty-six six and four hundred and twenty-six six in the current year. So what does that mean? Well, every year this goes up, so you're not going to have to memorize the threshold. But what happens is, as long as your taxable income is low enough then your QBI deduction can be maxed out. You can take the biggest QBI deduction allowable as long as your taxable income is low enough. So if you're below this 326.6, then you don't have to worry about losing any of the precious QBI deduction. And it says her taxable income is 278,000. So that's well below the 326.6. So we won't have any problem with limiting her QBI deduction based on this threshold of 326.6. So what do you know about the basics of QBI? Well, the QBI deduction can never be greater than 20% of taxable income. So the first thing you might want to do is take 20% of taxable income and say it could never be greater than that, which is 55,600. But it might be less because QBI comes from business income qualified business income, income from partnership businesses, S-Corp businesses, Schedule C businesses like this one. Well, the income from this Schedule C business is 235. That's the bottom line net of Schedule C. Not the gross on line one of Schedule C, but the bottom line net of Schedule C is 235. So the starting point for the QBI deduction would be 20% of this number right here, or 47,000. So with that in mind, let's calculate Julia's QBI deduction for the current year. And it looks like her QBI deduction will be $47,000. And that's calculated based on 20% of her Schedule C net profit of 235. And we can never take more than 20% of the taxable income, which is listed at 278. So we would have to just make a last minute check between 20% of Schedule C, 47000 and 20% of 278 taxable income, which is 556000 So the 47000 will be allowed in full since the Schedule C income is lower than the total taxable income. And since her taxable income is less than the 3266, that lower limit, then she's not in danger of losing any of the QBI deduction. We're just going to base it on her taxable income of 278 or the 235 Schedule C profit, whichever is lower. In this case, 235 Schedule C profit times 20%, we're going to give her 47,000 as a QBI deduction. Because her income was less than 326.6, we don't really care what the wages are. Those 80,000 of wages didn't mean a thing. Because if her income crept up to over 326.6, if her taxable income was more than that, then we would have to worry about wages. Wages might come into play. But right now they don't because her taxable income is below 326.6. We didn't get into this range here, so we don't have to worry about the wages. So the only thing we had to do here was take 20% of the Schedule C net income of 235000 we got 47,000 and then made sure that that's less than 20% of the taxable income of 278, which is 55,600. And yes, 47,000 would be the QBI deduction and she would get it in full. 47,000 would be a nice deduction 
And just so you know, the QBI deduction is not deductible to arrive at AGI, nor is it an itemized deduction. It's a very unique deduction that falls into its own category. It's not a deduction to arrive at AGI, nor is it deductible as an itemized deduction where you would have to then compare it to the standard deduction. No, it's a standalone deduction, but it's not deductible to arrive at AGI, nor is it an itemized deduction. Let's go on to number two. How much is Julia's QBI deduction for the current year? Well, same fact. She's married. She operates a candy store, sole proprietor. Business has the one employee who's paid $80,000 of wages in the current year. The business has no significant fixed assets, so everything's the same so far. Net income on Julia's Schedule C for the current year is the same $235,000 that it was in question one. But now, here's the new facts. Her taxable income is a very important $180,000 this time. Not what it was in the previous question, which was 278000 of taxable income. This time, it's only 180000 And once again, we want how much is Julia's QBI deduction for the current year? Well, you might recall that QBI deduction is always limited to 20% of taxable income. Therefore, that very important 180000 this time of taxable income times 20% is going to be $36,000. That's her QBI deduction this time not 47,000, not 20% of the Schedule C net income. Why not? That was good enough last time. Well, last time taxable income was higher than the Schedule C net profit of 235,000. Last time taxable income was 278,000. This time it's only 180,000 and the QBI deduction is always limited to 20% of taxable income. Therefore, 36,000 is going to be her QBI deduction, not 47,000. And the difference of 11000 will carry forward, and it can be deducted in future years, assuming she has enough income in those years. So when can you carry over the excess QBI deduction that's not allowed? Whenever the taxable income limits the QBI deduction compared to the Schedule C net profit, like we are in this situation, where we have taxable income of 180 and Schedule C profit of 235, we're limited to a $36,000 deduction this year, but we can carry over the other 11,000. This situation allows for a carryover. So the answer to question two is you get a 36,000 QBI deduction. And if they would have asked about the carryover, you'd say, yes, this particular situation does allow for the carryover. Okay, what's gonna be different in number three? Assume similar facts. Julia is a married taxpayer. She operates a candy store as a sole proprietor again. The business has one employee who's paid 80000 in wages again. The business has no significant fixed assets. Everything's the same. Net income on her Schedule C for the current year is how much? 550000 That's new for number three. Her Schedule C profit is suddenly a big 550000 and her taxable income exceeds 600000 That's new for number three also. And assume the threshold for a married filing jointly taxpayer is taxable income of, we said, 326.6 to 426.6. Now, these figures will have to be given to you on the exam, like I said, because they'll always go up a little bit. They're indexed for inflation. But look at where her taxable income is right now. It's well in excess of the upper limit of 426.6. So once again, we want her QBI deduction for the current year, but now she's in a much higher income situation. What's going to change? We have to approach this very differently now. We need to approach this very differently now. Since her taxable income is no longer under 326.6, suddenly wages must be considered. Also asset limitation, but they tell you there's no significant fixed assets, so we'll ignore assets, but wages must be considered. Since taxable income is over the 426.6 upper limit, what they say taxable income exceeds 600,000, the wages limit fully applies. In fact, if this were a service business, she'd get no QBI deduction at all. But since it's not a service business, it's a store, a candy store, or a manufacturing business also, then she can still get a QBI deduction, but it's going to be limited to 50% of the W-2 wages. And suddenly those W-2 wages that we've been ignoring in the first two questions, now that comes into play. We have to take 50% of the W-2 wages, and that's the maximum of her QBI deduction. $40,000. If not for the wage and property limits, what would her QBI deduction be? 
Well, it would have been 550, which is the Schedule C profit, times 20%, or 110, and then you'd compare that to taxable income, which would have been higher. So 110 would have been her QBI deduction had there been no wage limits here, but because the taxable income is over 426.6, the wage limits apply in full. And the wage limits say that 50% of your W-2 wages is going to be your maximum QBI deduction whenever you're over 426.6 of taxable income. So instead of 110 as a QBI deduction, she's looking at 40,000 as a QBI deduction. And in this situation, the difference of 70,000 is not carried forward. So that 70,000 that she loses is not carried forward. You only carry forward the unused QBI deduction when QBI is being limited by 20% of taxable income, such as we saw in question two. So we just looked at a situation, we jumped the taxable income from where it was at 180,000 in question two to 600,000 in question three to show the extreme situation, what happens if taxable income is well above the upper limit of 426.